Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jess. Welcome to my kitchen here at Roots and Refuge Farm. This video has been a long time coming. This is the kind of video that you guys have asked me for for years and I've never uh, really felt like it was one that I could feasibly do. Today's a kitchen day, which means that I'm gonna be taking a lot of harvest and making a lot of things. Now, this is not necessarily a how-to video. Um, anything that I'm doing that needs like further instruction, I will link below uh, blogs and websites and the places where I'm learning how to do these things. And there are a couple of things today that I'm gonna make separate videos of that will be how-tos. But today is an overview. I want to give you guys a look at what a kitchen day looks like for uh, someone like me that has a farm, a small farm, big garden, as well as feeding a family at the same time. That kind of comes into play because when I'm doing a kitchen day, uh, they still have to eat. So I'm just inviting you in my space today and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm doing with some of the things that I'm harvesting off of my farm right now. All right, so right here on my stove, I have a pot of water that's beginning to simmer. This is going to be for blanching some carrots. I still have some carrots left to do something with and I'm just gonna blanch them and put them in the freezer. Uh, those were picked a handful of days ago, so I've got them soaking. This pot of boiling water, it's now just starting to boil. Um, this is going to be for making some broth. We butchered chickens yesterday. We, um, we put up 60 meat chickens and I have saved necks and feet that are going to go in broth. They're washed and frozen in individual bags um, and that means that I don't have to make them all at once. There, there is a lot of them, it's gonna make a lot of broth. But today I was harvesting these leeks which the bottom parts I'm going to dice and wash and dehydrate and the top parts of these leaves, leeks are great for making broth. So I'm going to throw these in, maybe with if I have some funky or weird shaped carrots, I'll throw those in as well, and those chicken parts to make a nice rich broth, which I can either freeze or can. I drink way too much coffee on days like this where I'm just in the kitchen all day. It is about 10 in the morning right now, getting started, so it's a little later in the day. What the day has looked like for me so far is I got up a little after six, worked out, did quiet time and spent some time out in the garden. But we actually have some thunderstorms coming through. So so I had already planned on having a kitchen day soon. I, I need one. And so having a day that there was gonna be some inclement weather, I try to turn those into kitchen days whenever I can. All right, so I have just diced up a bunch of these leeks and put them on the trays of my dehydrator. This is an Excalibur, I can't remember the model number, but it's the one with nine trays. And I've got it set up here where I can leave it. Um, I've got five trays already prepared. Here's the last tray that I'm gonna use. I actually would put more trays in my dehydrator right now if I knew where they were, but they're still packed up. I haven't completely unpacked my kitchen yet. Uh, so here's some of the green tops that I have just washed and cut up as I've cut these up. There's still quite a few green tops in the sink. I'm gonna go through some of those. I just wanna make sure I'm not putting dirt or bugs in my broth. Um, but what I'm doing here is taking the bottom part of these leeks, the white part, and then the light green part that's still really soft, and cutting them in half long ways like this. I saw, I looked online and saw where multiple people did this and they like dehydrated them as rings, but this is just going faster for me. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And I'm cutting these down to about a quarter of an inch wide and then spreading them over the tray. On this bottom tray, I put like one of these silicone mats. Uh, the reason I did that is because it's gonna be underneath all those others. These do have some really small parts on them and that way if anything falls down, it just gets caught on this tray instead of falling down to the bottom of the dehydrator. I don't expect there to be a lot of that, but I just thought it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and throw this on. I did not pick a ton of these this time because I knew I didn't know where all my dehydrator trays were and it looks like I guesstimated it. Now here's a lot of tops left. Like I said, I'm gonna go through that to get more to put in this stock pot. Let's go ahead and put this in here. And start it. 
Okay, so I put this on the vegetable setting, which is about 125 degrees, and I'm gonna set it for about six hours and keep an eye on it. It's my first time. Now, those dry leeks, once they are dehydrated, I'm just gonna put them in a mason jar, put a lid on them and stick them in the pantry, and they will be used to like throw in soups uh, or any sort of like, you know, wet cooking like that where they can be rehydrated. If I wanted them to last longer, I could vacuum seal them once they were dehydrated, but I expect I'll probably use them here pretty soon. I still have like 100 leeks in the garden, so uh, I probably am going to be doing this daily for a little while, as well as continuing to use those fresh as they come in. I've been making like casseroles and different things with them. Leeks are really good for like potato soup. That's a, been one of the big suggestions, and I have made that, it was really good. Um, there's something called cockaleeky soup, which is like a chicken and leek soup that's pretty popular um, in other places of the world really not so much here in the United States but uh, it's really hot outside so we're not eating a ton of soups right now I may end up making some and freezing portions of it because it would be really nice to have that especially right now when we have all these fresh potatoes and leeks all right next step I'm going to blanch these carrot slices to put them in freezer bags and just freeze them. Again, uh, for soup, that's kind of what I'm looking at for some of these extra carrots. So I'm just cutting these into like soup bite-sized chunks, little slices, and I'm getting a pile of them ready. I've got some ice right here, water simmering, and basically what I'm doing here is just sticking them in the water for like two minutes for these little pieces, and then I'm going to directly put them in the ice to stop the cooking because I'm not wanting to fully cook them. I'm just wanting to blanch them long enough to kill the enzymes and just make them last longer in the freezer. And then I'll uh, put them in freezer bags and get as much of the air out as I can, seal them up and put them in the freezer. While I'm doing this, any like tops or like I've got some, you know, like these weird long ends, I'm just throwing them in the stock pot, which has the leek tops in it. That's simmering on low and will for the next few hours. I'm just gonna keep throwing scraps in there to make this broth. And over here, I have more carrots to deal with. They've been soaking. And then in here, uh, more carrots that I've been washing off as well as some of the excess leek tops. Also, I uh, went ahead and diced up some okra, but I'll show you that here in a second. All right, so I've got a couple bags here. Each one of these has about two cups in it, which is enough for me to throw in a pot of soup. These are sitting in an ice bath to cool off, and now I have this pot of water uh, from blanching all of those, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this into this broth because it's got all that good stuff in it, so I don't wanna just toss that out. It will go in my broth as I continue to add things to this pot. I still have quite a few carrots here. Uh, they're on the smaller side, so I was just going to top them, leave them whole, uh, do a jar of maybe some pickled carrots or maybe fermented, and then some of these I'm gonna shred up and make a special treat. Lunch today, people still have to eat even though I'm doing a kitchen day. This is a chicken which we raised. We just processed these. I've got some butter in this cast iron pan. This is called a spatchcock chicken where you cut the backbone out like that. I actually don't remove the backbone because anytime I cook a chicken, I use the bones to make broth. And so what I do is just cut down one side of it and uh, lay it open. So the backbone's still connected here. And today, this um, roasted chicken is going to be for lunch. And then whenever it's done, I'm going to take whatever's left of it and throw it in that pot along with all of the pan drippings to make that broth. Right now I'm just browning the skin in this 14 inch cast iron pan. The oven is heating to 400 and I'll flip this over and this chicken will actually roast in about 45 minutes because it's laid open like that. It makes it cook a whole lot faster which is a really great option whenever you're trying to make lunch while you're doing all this other stuff. Next step I'm gonna get this okra ready to go up. I have taken nice young small okra and what I've done is just washed it and diced it into these little medallions. I like a little bit bigger pieces 
uh, because I like to be able to taste the okra. You can make them smaller if you want. This is a mix of this uh, corn flour, which you can use cornmeal. You can use a mix of flour and cornmeal. I really like this corn flour because I like cornmeal, but sometimes it can be a little on the crunchy side. So that has been my favorite thing so far for breading okra. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to put this okra directly in here and I am just gonna spread it out onto this cookie sheet, this metal cookie sheet. You can do this faster by putting all of this stuff in like a bag and shaking it or something with a lid. Again, I'm working with a not fully unpacked kitchen, so I'm kind of having to improvise here. All right, so this sheet is pretty well done and coated. This, I'm just gonna go set it in our deep freezer until these are all frozen. I don't want them touching one another, so they're just sort of spaced out here. And then once they're all frozen, I will take this and I'll put it all in a freezer bag and freeze it. Okra comes in a lot <laughs> once it starts getting going. I mean, you just have to harvest it every day. And a lot of times you don't have just a ton. A lot of times there's not enough to maybe pickle it or whatever you might have to save it for some days and so I like doing this because I usually can fill up a tray like this and I can put it in a quart bag and this can be a side for a dinner later on and it's pretty simple to put it up this way all right so it's a little bit later in the day we had a lunch break and worked on some other things and I kind of came back in to my kitchen endeavors. So over here, I just ran some zucchini through my food processor and measured them out in bags. So each one of these is pre-measured two cups and all of these are gonna go in the freezer. The zucchini bread recipe that I like to use, which I'll link it down below, um, and many zucchini bread recipes that I have seen, they call for two cups of shredded zucchini. And so if I, end up with either a really large zucchini, like a baby size zucchini that got away from me in the garden. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is run those through the food processor, measure them out and freeze the bags. Uh, I like to put up quite a few of those bags through this season because then I can make zucchini bread with zucchini from my garden all year long. All you have to do is thaw it out. Zucchini and squash, when you put them in the freezer, they lose their texture a lot. They get really mushy, which if you're trying to like saute them, obviously that completely ruins that route of using them. But to bake it in a bread is completely fine for it to be mushy. So that's a really good thing to do if you end up with like excess and you know, you can't, eat them fresh or or if you do end up with those really massive zucchinis that you don't know what else to do with. And over here, I am making some quick pickles out of these cucumbers. Um, this has onions and dill and those are some carrots. I'm currently shooting another video right now as well that's going in depth on instructions on how to do that. So that will be up tomorrow telling you guys how to quick pickle. Here is my lovely broth which has the leftover chicken from lunch as well as those leeks and lots of carrot parts and some bits of onion and garlic. That's actually not on right now. I, t I turned it off, it's still very hot. I'm gonna cover this. Um, I'm gonna have to leave my house here in a little bit and that will still be warm whenever I get back. I might even turn it back on low for a little bit and heat it back up. It's not gonna like cool off or anything. It's a very big pot of very hot liquid. So I've got a couple hours for that to stay pretty warm. Um, I'm gonna be gone and when I come back, I'm gonna can that, which means it might be a kind of late night in the kitchen, but sometimes it goes that way. Whenever you start stuff, you gotta finish it. Now another thing that I am doing, and I'd hope to get it done today, and I don't know, I might, since I'm gonna be up canning, I may go ahead and do this tonight, but I was gonna make some carrot cake muffins out of some of the leftovers of these carrots. So I saved out enough to be able to make those. Um, so I'll just shred those and mix them in. We make carrot cake muffins. There is a cookbook that I use the recipe out of, and I don't know if it's online anywhere, but the cookbook is called The Back in the Day 
bakery cookbook and I will link it as well but um, it has a carrot cake recipe in it that is my absolute favorite it has currants and carrots and uh, brown sugar it's just really really tasty and we don't we actually don't ice it it has a really good like spiced cream cheese icing recipe but we usually just make it in muffins and eat them like muffins so that's I, I would like to do that tonight I'm not a hundred percent sure that I'm gonna have the time to do that so I just pulled my okra out of the freezer and I wanted to talk to you a little bit further about this because I wanted to make sure I was completely clear. I didn't, I don't think I went into depth about in this enough earlier. I, in the past, have coated okra with a flour and corn flour mixture and it coats pretty well. I don't think that this coated enough. I think that this needs to be washed in an egg bath before the coating goes on to be frozen. That's how I've done it in the past. Um, and I have done it without the egg bath with a flour mixture. I don't think I explained that earlier, that I was just gonna try this flour out this way. But looking at this, I just don't think that it's coated enough. Now, it is coated enough to freeze. Um, it is coated enough that they're not stuck together and they froze individually. So I'm gonna go ahead and just freeze these. However, before I fry these, whenever I thaw them out, I will probably bread them again. Um, because I think that if I were to try to fry these with this breading falling off the way that it is, that they would not be well coated. So I wanted to make that clear. I actually edited the first half of this video and realized that I hadn't explained that I was just trying this method. Um, but as you can see, like a lot of the coating fell off and I just don't feel like these are breaded. So it's done like an egg bath, just some beat up eggs, and I'll put the okra in that and then coat it and uh, then lay it out on the tray, do everything exactly the same as this, except for with an egg bath and freeze it that way individually and then put them in a bag like this. And I really think that that's the better way. I'm gonna go ahead and save these and it's fine, but the rest of the ones that I do this year uh, will be better breaded. But I did wanna go ahead and get those out of the freezer so I could use that space in this pan. And I'm actually going to lay these zucchini on here flat just because they store a lot nicer in the freezer when they're flat like this. And this way I don't have to worry about them like falling down weird between other things and drying all like a big chunk. If they're flat, they just thaw out a lot easier. So I'm gonna go stick this back in the deep freezer. And then once these are frozen, then I can move them around and uh, store them a little easier. It's late, I'm back in the kitchen, kids are in bed, and I've got the pressure canner on the stove. I'm waiting for it to get up to uh, heat so I can put the weight on and pressure can this broth. I like, I was, when I went to put it in the jars, Jeremiah was helping me pour it through a strainer. And I was like, is that purple? And I got it where I could like shine the light through it. And I putting those carrots in it made uh, the broth purple. I've got my fridge pickle stuff right here. That's about to go in the refrigerator. I decided not to cook the carrot cake tonight. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Actually, Jeremiah was just talking to me about how like, canning is such a, a monotonous task. I actually really enjoy canning. It is very much, and, and just the whole, all the active preservation of food, it is very, I guess, meditative to me because there's a lot of cutting, there's a lot of preparation. I like it. It's, it's something that it's hard for me to make videos of because honestly, I'm usually blaring music, which I can't really do on a video. And uh, I kind of really get into that meditative groove. I mean, it's something that just going through those tasks, I kind of zone out and really kind of get into my thoughts. And uh, I, I like that. I will continue to share the process with you guys this season, uh, showing you what I'm doing, showing you as I'm doing it uh, when I can, and showing you what I've done. So you can see kind of some of the ideas of what we're doing with some of our harvest. Growing a garden is incredible, but going through the process of putting it up, it can be difficult if you don't know what you're doing. It can be very, very overwhelming, and sometimes your window to do something with food while it's in its prime, it's short. But I think that knowing simple things like 
putting things through the food processor and putting them in the freezer for certain uses. I mean, that kind of stuff can really save you whenever you're in a bind and you're overwhelmed. So thank you again for hanging out with me today. I will do more content like this uh, this season. I bless you. Until next time.